In this video, we're going to talk about the history of New Orleans. So before starting, please like it and subscribe to our channel for future updates. Establishment of New Orleans New Orleans is a known destination by the majority of the global population, but have you ever wondered how New Orleans came to existence? The Louisiana city was named the state's capital in 1723, although decisions to found New Orleans started in 1717 by John Law's Company of the West. The company saw its potential in terms of trade since it would be a great corridor for trade in the Mississippi River Valley. After the site was suggested by Jean-Baptiste Le Moyne, the then governor of French Louisiana, the bush was cleared in 1718 and the process to build the city began. Although the process was expected to run smoothly, the engineers tasked to complete the construction of the city encountered limited labor, mosquito infestation, and two hurricanes which struck in 17 1721 and 1722. The last challenge might have been the mightiest setback felt during the construction of New Orleans. However, that did not deter the engineers from drafting and completion of the city's first plan, which consisted of the current French Quarter, or View Car. In 1723, the capital of Louisiana was transferred from Biloxi to New Orleans, New Orleans' colonial era. Nineteen years later, after New Orleans became the capital of Louisiana in 1762, France was worried about the unprofitable port it had built and decided to cede the state of Louisiana to Spain. A year later, 1763, the Treaty of Paris was signed and Spain was given Louisiana Territory, which was on the west side of River Mississippi as well as New Orleans. During the Spanish era, New Orleans was transformed in terms of infrastructure and trade. In fact, the unprofitable port during the French regime it became a trading partner with Mexico and Cuba despite Spanish restrictions. However, fire raised the city in 1788 and 1974. Although the fire had adverse effects to the entire Louisiana, it led to the introduction of safer architectural codes by the Spanish, which led to the prevalence of colonial Spanish style of architecture. A good example is the Cabildo in New Orleans, which was built in between 1795 and 1799. Despite the smooth governance of Spain and Louisiana, Spain reverted the state back to France in 1803. Surprisingly, 20 days had not yet passed when the Louisiana Purchase was completed whereby France sold the territory, including New Orleans, to the United States of America. By this time, the population had grown from 470 people in 1721 to approximately 8,000 in 1803. The Louisiana Purchase felt so good to Jean Lafitte, a French pirate operating in the Gulf of Mexico. Therefore, he assisted Major General Andrew Jackson and the Americans in 1815 during the Battle of New Orleans to defeat the British at Chalmette after an earlier threat from British invasion force in 1803. Economy in New Orleans between 1805 and 1861. After the British were defeated, the people of Louisiana and New Orleans did not know that they would flourish economically and socially for almost the next 40 years. The Americans were very focused with the potential of the Louisiana capital and needed to know its full potential because it would be of an advantage to USA. After investing for more than 30 years trying to build New Orleans' economy, the local commerce in New Orleans increased rapidly and reached $54 million by 1835. Besides, by 1840, Mississippi River steamboats had increased to 400 after the first one was introduced in New Orleans in 1812. The agriculture culture sector was not left out in New Orleans because cotton and sugarcane plantations produced a million pounds of produce per year. In this case, the sugarcane plantations produced more than 450 million pounds per year. Such produce would be transported by a steamboats in Mississippi River downstream up to the ocean. The port had a lot of revenue and created wealth for lawyers, bankers, insurers, and merchants who were in control of logistics and finance at the port. Such a scenario led to the recognition of New Orleans to be one of the capitals with the highest concentration of millionaires in America. Yellow fever epidemic in New Orleans. By 1850s, a lot of migrants had settled in New Orleans and the population had escalated to almost 120,000. This was as a result of urbanization and the increase in trade in New Orleans. However, the city's plant had not been structured to accommodate such population. By that time, the city did not have a sewage system, efficient drainage system, and quality sanitation. Since the city had frequent events of flooding, the yellow fever epidemic struck 
struck in New Orleans, killing about 8,000 people. The disease would be later referred to as the American Plaque. The American Civil War. In April 1861, Union soldiers were attacked at Fort Sumter by the Confederates, triggering the start of the American Civil War, which would last for four years up until 1865. Since New Orleans was in a strategic location, the Union soldiers captured it in the same month led by David Farragut. However, Farragut left the administration to General Butler, who handled New Orleans' population violently and fiercely. Later on, the same year, Butler was replaced with Nathaniel Banks as the year came to an end, during and after Reconstruction. The period of Reconstruction attracted a lot of tension, not only in New Orleans, but also across America. During this period, the government recommended the legislation of civil rights for slaves. However, in 1872, everything changed. This is because the municipal government, which had been under military control, such as New Orleans, was given to the whites. The city forces and the state government were under the radical Republican. Therefore, racial segregation continued for a while. Although the city never regained its global and regional status in terms of trade and development, the Reconstruction era gave New Orleans an uplift. They say everything has its positive and negative sides, right? During that period, New Orleans gained in different aspects of urban planning, which included proper drainage and sewage systems, better public health, and improved water treatment. However, the Radical Republic was not aware of the looming financial crisis which would strike. The debt had increased up to $24 million in the 1880s. Therefore, the governance had to pay the municipal debt before Louisiana's so that the municipal could get new bonds. However, such a scenario continued for the entire 19th century. Currently, multiple tourists visit New Orleans much, right? Well, here Here's why. Louisiana's capital is where jazz music originated. During the 1800s, the Victorian era, when New Orleans blossomed, music, performance, and art became very rampant in this area. Due to this, jazz music emerged, and it was very much welcomed by the New Orleans population. However, the artists did not know that they were demonstrating the city's contribution to the music industry. New Orleans in the 20th century. World War I. WW1 had significant impact in New Orleans. Since a lot of raw materials were needed by the military, New Orleans has to provide a channel for their transportation. Due to this, the U.S. government increased the maritime infrastructure by building more shipyards and warehouses. This led to the increase in wages and employment to the population of New Orleans. The ability of money in New Orleans resulted to the collection of $103 million from the capital's population to support the war effort. World War II during the Second World War, New Orleans continued to play a critical role. The most recommendable effort from New Orleans is the impact of Higgin Boats in WW2, named after a local shipbuilder called Andrew Higgins. These boats were built to deliver essentials through shallow waters because the enemies were located in the deep waters. A warship has to dock in deep water. Thus, Higgins used that opportunity to outdo the enemies. These boats were very effective, such that they were used in island hopping campaign 1941 to 1944 and in the beaches of Normandy. Hurricanes in New Orleans The geographical location of New Orleans makes the capital vulnerable to hurricane attack. The capital's altitude is six feet below the sea level. In the capital's history, five hurricanes have hit New Orleans since 1947. Since September 1947, the hurricane of 1947 struck the city up to 40 miles away, Bayou Village. The 112 miles per hour hurricane killed 51 people and led to the destruction of property worth $100 million in New Orleans. The second hurricane, Hurricane Betsy, occurred in October of 1965, when a 135 mile per hour storm hit New Orleans. The capital was fully flooded and 81 people died. Moreover, four years later, September 1998, Hurricane Georges hit New Orleans while Hurricane Ivan caused significant issues in September 2004 when people tried to move to Baton Rouge. Finally, the worst of them all was Hurricane Katrina, which attacked the east of New Orleans in August 2005. Karina left more than 80% of the eastern bank flooded and killed more than 1,500 people. The incident was so severe that most buildings were destroyed, people went missing, and the residents and government of Louisiana are still rebuilding New Orleans up to date. 
Well, what do you think of our video? Do let us know in the comment box below. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel for future updates.